the Monday news number 44. All right, so this month we put our Project Camp Academy online, which is basically going to be the main place where we put all our information so people can learn from it. Uh, a bit the same as what we did with Pressure Plastic. And Project Camp is just getting started, so there isn't that much yet, but this would be and will become the main place in the future. Um, but for now, we started off by releasing some research videos. So we went out to a few communities ourselves around the world to understand what they're doing and learn from their experiences. So the first one was in Tamera in Portugal. We released this video this month. And also one in Aravil in India, uh, also a great community. And we also have this section where we share more documentaries that we didn't make ourselves, but we do think are worth watching. So this month I actually watched Spaceship Earth, which I would recommend to watch. It's about this uh, group of people that end 80s, begin 90s, started living in what they call a biosphere. Uh, so it's sort of a closed space and see if they can survive there. I think back then already with the intention like what if we would live on Mars, but also to just see if we can create our own little ecosystem. I guess it didn't really work out as they intended and it did get a lot of criticism, but I would say very valuable information and a lot to learn from. So completely other news, but it also happened, is that Fairphone released a new smartphone. And Fairphone makes uh, usually phones that are uh, sourced with ethical materials, but they also do understand the value of keeping your phone longer, that it reduces the amount of waste. And I would say of all the phones in the world, this one is probably the closest to modularity or sort of something that Phoneblocks had in mind uh, as a project. Because what they did now is with their new model is that you can buy a new module of the camera and the speaker, which sort of upgrades your whole phone. So in a way, the new model isn't a completely new phone with all the components. It's really only the hardware that you need to upgrade. And I think this is a great step uh, by slowly integrating more modularity and electronics. And I guess they're really showing that it's possible. Obviously still a long way to go and it's just a few components, but very hopeful and very impressive that they're still continue to push this topic. And they also actually, I think the only phone on iFixit that has a 10 out of 10 uh, repairability score, which is kind of impressive. Talking about phones, another cool documentary released this month is called The Social Dilemma, which is all about our smartphones and how we are addicted to it and how it also really shapes society. And in a way, not all the information in there was new, but it sums it up very well. I actually also made a video about this uh, for Storyhopper two years ago or something. It's actually one of my favorite Storyhopper videos, uh, which is more about data, so the bigger topic. That on the one hand is very addictive, uh, designed to be addicted, but also uh, about the physical materials it still takes and the resources to store all this data and that we just easily keep on making more. And I do think it's a very interesting and relevant topic for us because we're so immersed into it in our daily lives. I mean, we're really going all towards this digital world, even more with COVID. So I think it's good to be aware of the consequences of this. So talking about Storyhopper, man, I have a lot of connections this time. Uh, I also made this video a while ago of a storage system based on industrial crates that you can store your stuff. And I also shared the drawings online. And this month I actually found a picture of a fresh plastic in Portugal that replicated it and used it to store their own stuff. And they actually also made a little tweak to it that they can store their shredded plastic. Always interesting to see. Wait, so before we continue, I actually have a question for you guys. So I've been making these monthly news now for almost three years. And it's fun, but I also, uh, yeah, I guess after a while, I mean, so I wonder what you guys actually like to see. Uh, is it good as it is? Or do you like to see more the community updates or the updates from us in the team or more news in general in the world, like new documentaries that are released? Uh, I guess in general, I could use some inspiration. So if you have any good formats, interesting YouTube videos out there, or suggestions, ideas, make sure to post them in the comments below so I can check them out and spice things up. So Q Fosang from China actually has been producing quite a bunch of shredders as he shares them in the Discord. And he now actually made a new version of it again. Uh, it's always interesting to see what the community makes. But a very popular topic now is also the sheet press. You see more and more people building them and also tweaking them and hacking them or improving them. And this is always where it gets very interesting for us. So for instance, here, Sheep on Wheels from Belgium. Uh, they made some sort of control panel to automate it. I, I'm not really sure what they're doing, but it looks very promising. And they've actually also been playing more with laser cutting and I think water cutting to see what you can do with the sheets and what kind of shapes you can cut out. Don't forget the how-to. And Fiction Factory from Amsterdam also built a sheet press, but they also released a how-to with all the improvement hacks and things they did different. So you can download the 3D models, bill of materials, and this is always where it gets very interesting to work with the community, to really learn from each other. Because product development is just always ongoing, things can always be improved. So currently the Precious Plastic team in France 
uh, is actually looking into the washing system and how can we improve that. And here's a little clip of Rory explaining what he's working on. So some of you may have noticed on a previous monthly news. Lewis and I have been working on a project to develop a collecting, sorting, washing and shredding system. And on our how-tos that Precious Plastic have been working on designing a washing system for dirty plastics. For the last month I have been in France uh, working on refining that design and hopefully coming to a good conclusion that we can uh, upload and document in the future. So with this system we have a large uh, tank, reserve tank with all the water uh, for the whole system. The whole thing is closed uh, so no microplastics end up leaching out. We have a little Arduino and control box to automate things a little bit easier. This one is the pre-wash. So this is where the dirty plastics go in um, and hopefully cleaner plastics are removed. Uh, and this is a pressure washer. And then we go on to the next stage, which would be shredding the plastic. And then once that plastic is shredded, finally it's put in a bag and put in the washing machine uh, to be cleaned and hopefully giving you a good uh, clean plastic that you can use for your uh, products. So this is what we have now, and we'll continue to update you on the progress uh, and release all the information in the near future. And this month, Jason also released this Kickstarter for a skateboard. We actually have one here. So he's been working a few years to make skateboards from recycled plastic. And he really wanted to make a, a deck that can perform, that can do ollies and flips, which I would say is very new to the world of skateboards and recycled plastic. Um, but he actually made a nice detailed Kickstarter campaign. Uh, so here's a little clip of it. I'm Jason, co-founder of Design and Art Collective Mandan. I've invented a way to make skateboard decks from 100% recycled plastic, and I'm sharing them open source. I'm making a download kit containing all the information people need to be able to produce them themselves. And I'm publishing it online for free. For free? Yeah man, for free. It's called open source. I'll explain a bit later. This campaign not only gives you an opportunity to get your hands on one of the very first batch of decks to ever be sold, it also gives you an opportunity to support plastic recyclers all over the world by giving them a functional new product they can make from plastic waste for free. But yeah, go make sure to check it out and support this guy. He's a nice guy. Talking about nice guys, here's a picture of Manduku that works in the workspace we set up in Kenya a few years ago. And uh, he's also there with the extrusion machine. And I would say it's kind of rough, that extrusion machine, compared to the standards we have now and the knowledge we have. Because the motor is very slow and the materials from there are kind of, yeah, not super high quality. And for some reason, he manages to make this very consistent thread out of it. I really don't know how he does, does it. I wouldn't be able to do it. And every now and then he sends some pictures of baskets he weaves. And he's also pushing always the limits of the material to see what else you can do with it. So here you can see him in his house where he made a fence out of it by just carefully weaving it so you can use it for chickens or goats to keep them away. I, I know, impressive. I haven't tested it, but it looks impressive. So this month we also did a few updates to our bazaar. Uh, so you can now see with a listing in which country it's being sold and also the person that is selling it. We've also added a filter so you can select on the distance so you can find products more locally. And we also improved our categories on the product section so you can find better a type of product you have in mind and I would highly recommend to check out the bazaar again I mean it's been online for a few years but in the recent period a lot of new cool listings came up there like furniture lightning small items bowls and you can all buy them and I think people don't realize how powerful that tool is because by buying something there you directly support the maker on the other side of the world working on these topics because on the one hand you support them financially by giving them money but also more uh, motivational by buying their products and they realize they actually created something that other people like. So yeah, I would highly recommend when Christmas is coming or a birthday is coming up or you need something to just have a look on the bazaar. And while you're at it, also make sure to have a critical look at it and give us feedback if you think things could be improved or don't work properly, because we're always looking into improving that place for the community. Now I wanna show you one of those makers who's actually been very active in the Precious Plastic universe. Very dedicated guy, he's been doing it for years by building and selling machines. And his name is Landry, he's from France. 
uh, this is what he looks like. And he actually also came to the Netherlands to help out version 4 to develop this Pro Shredder. Uh, and actually, I think on his second day or something, when he came, his hand got stuck into the lathe and it broke. So he went to the hospital, put some plaster in it, and I think even the next day already he was back working. I mean, very dedicated guy. And he's now looking into the C certification of the machines to really step it up one more notch. And Kat dropped by in his workspace in France, so he's gonna give you a tour. Hello! I'm Landry from France and uh, I have created Le Recycler Foods, like the crazy recycler, in the little countryside in Vendée. So, welcome! Here we make machines for uh, precious plastic. So, we have a workspace for make machines. So, there are some tools like uh, a lathe, a little one, different part for make machine. And this is a workspace. Ta da! And here we make a different machine, so extrusion V4, shredder V4, shredder V3. Yeah, different machine for different person. Uh, I have started in 2017 the project with uh, my first shredder here. Yeah. I can show you. <laughs> so that, it was my first one. It still works. Little rusty, but, uh, but it works very good. And also uh, my first extrusion machine on the other side and the injection, just here. It still works very good, we use it uh, a lot for different tests and stuff like that. But now we make machine, so I can show you uh, the extrusion V4. So I have to do some modification on the precious plastic one. I have changed, for example, this design for but it easy to assembly. Uh, and I uh, work a lot on the C certification on this type of machine. So right now we have the certification of the, on this extrusion on the V4 shredder. So here we have some machine ready to be shipped. So that it's the extrusion V4 finish. C certification, so we just need to put some stickers on it uh, before be shipping. Be ship. I'm so French. Almost all the parts are from France, on, from my place. Place I work with different workspace around, uh, maximum 20 kilometers for arrive to have uh, something very ecologic. I have modified the hopper, it's stainless steel. I have modified with uh, a grill on for don't put your finger on, uh, for put it uh, more safety. And when it's uh, empty and you want to change the production, you just need to up, empty it, and back. And also, I have uh, put this protection here on here, on here for protect of the heater. So yeah, I'm so proud of this machine. Well, the seal certification is complicated to understand, but uh, the, um, the goal, the goal is to, uh, if you want to kill you, with this machine, I need to make it for you can't mm -hmm. kill you inside. But we try to make it uh, certified by ourselves. It's possible to do, but it's uh, a long process and you need to have a lot, lot, lot of uh, paper for prove everything is safety. So yeah, it's difficult, but it's not impossible to have. So everybody can do it. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> In total, I have made uh, like 30 machines, 10 extrusion machines, a lot of shredder, V3 shredder, injection, and yeah. I have sold the machine in Madagascar, India, Canada also, okay. Canada, French Canada, and that all. After it's everything go to France. Yeah. I just start to uh, receive a little salary, but it's difficult. But uh, yeah, no, uh, no, I can live with. Uh, the production of machine. A lot of people give us plastic, so we won't do something with it, and uh, not just make machine, but uh, try to recycling the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that was it for now. Thanks for watching again this monthly news episode. Uh, yeah, don't forget to comment below uh, suggestions or feedback or any inspiration YouTube videos that I have something to watch. Um, autumn is coming, you know, rainy days. So yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next monthly news.